Hello. My name is Keshwani. This K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We have been preparing ourselves ourselves for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. What I want to discuss today is, is what you're going to find on page number, uh, starting on page number 129. If you have the book in front of you, which I hope that you do, turn to page 129 and you will see what I, where I'm going with this thing. On page 129, they discuss using the calculator. Back in the old days, in the old GRE, the old version of the GRE, this book that I'm holding in my hand here, the 10th, 10th edition, back in the old days, calculators were not allowed on the GRE. Nowadays, they do allow it. They do allow the use of the calculator, but only the calculator that they provide you themselves on the screen. On the screen, you will see, I'm going to hold it up one more time, right here. You do your work here, and then it, there's the key here, which says transfer display. So if you came up with the answer of 57, and if you feel that that's the final answer, you press this button where it says transfer display, and it transfers automatically the answer of 57 to the play, place where, where you click the mouse and it goes directly there. But anyway, it's a simple four function calculator, and then they go on and on about how you should use this bloody thing, and they talk about the memory recall and memory cancel and memory this and memory that. Don't use any of those buttons. What I'm trying to make you understand in this clip is try to minimize Try to keep your use of the calculator as little as possible. For example, turn to page number 131. There are some problems that they do there, which I'm going to do with you, and you will see what I mean by that. Do not be overly dependent on the calculator. For example, the very first problem that they give you is this, 4 plus 6.37 over 2. Instead of trying to do all at once in the calculator, do this thing manually yourself. 6.73 divided by 2 cannot possibly be that complicated to do it on your own. How many twos in a six? There are three twos in a six. How many twos in a seven? There are three twos in a seven. The remaining one goes and joins this guy becomes 13. How many twos in a 13? 13 has six. Six uh, twos in there. The remaining one goes and joins this guy. This guy so called here actually is zero. Because you know you can put as many zeros as you want. So the remaining one goes and joins this guy becomes 10. How many twos in a 10? There are five twos. There you go, that's it, we're done. No need, for, no need for calculator. Try to minimize the calculator as much as I can, as much as you can. Because sometimes you make a mistake with a calculator, the calculator is not going to scream at you and say, hey you, uh, you're not thinking. If you do it by hand, you'll be more conscious of what you're doing here. That's it, that's your answer. Here's the four, here's the three, so the final answer is 7.365, whatever, whatever the hell it was. That's it. The second problem that they give you, The second problem that they give you is the same exact thing. Do not waste your time trying to do every single step in the calculator as they explain it here. Here it is. Negative 8.4 plus 9.3 over 70. So the very first thing you have to understand is that forget this negative part. There is no need, there is no reason for you to have to put this negative in the calculator. Leave it alone. Just remember that it's negative. Just do it out here. 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 plus 1 is 17. So it's 17.7 .7 over 70. And this is the part that you will do in the calculator. I'm not totally against the calculator. Back in the old days, in the old exam, something like this would not appear. Because there was something like this would not have appeared because they would have realized that trying to do it manually would take, for you to take some time. And therefore, it, something like this would not appear. All the questions were designed in such a way that they could, in fact, be solved uh, without the calculator, without too much, uh, without having to use too much time. These days, once in a while, you do get into situations where the answers are very weird, and you have simply no choice but to, but to use the calculator. For example, uh, just a few days ago, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, on day number 24, I was doing a percentage problem. Yes, not day number 24. Day number 23. Today is day number. Give me one second here and I'll find it. It was something about it, something divided by 10,000. 
there you go. It was on day number 23. And the final answer that came out was 10,000 divided by 92. Well, obviously, you're not going to try to do 10,000 divided by 92 manually. It will take you forever. So here, this will be the legitimate case for somebody having to reach for the calculator that they give you. So that's it. 17.7 divided by 70, whatever the hell that is. I don't know what it is. I don't care what it is. Just do it out in the calculator. And once you have your answer, just stick a negative in front of it because this negative comes out here. But there is no reason why you should have to put the negative in the calculator from the very beginning. It becomes very tedious, very annoying and very difficult to keep track of the things because sometimes in the manipulation if you end up putting the negative in the wrong place then you're done. Let's do the next one. Next one is another point in case uh, that, that will demonstrate the fact that sometimes uh, you have no choice but to use the calculator on this new exam because the numbers that they give you these days uh, sometimes in the old exams you would not have seen it. For example here we have a hypotenuse they're asking for hypotenuse of a right angled triangle with legs 21 and 54. So we have a right angle triangle we are told we have a right angle triangle we are told and we are asked to find this hypotenuse and we are told that the legs are 21 and 54. Well, you just have to use the Pythagorean theorem, use the Pythagorean theorem, and this guy here, let's call it x, would simply be, x squared would simply be 21 squared plus 54 squared. Again, listen carefully, don't try to do everything together in the calculator in one shot. That's what they're trying, the way they explain it, if you, if you read that their explanation, it goes on and on, you put the parentheses there, you do this and they do that. They're trying to do everything in one step in the calculator. Do not do that. You're going to end up making a mistake. Just pick up your calculator and figure out what 21 square is. Or better yet, 21 square is not that complicated. It's very straightforward, very simple. It only takes a few seconds. 21 times 1 is 21. So that's 1, 32. 21 times 2. 21 times 2 is 42. 42 plus 2 is 44. Voila, that's it. So that's 441. Pick up the calculator now. Do it in the calculator what 54 squared is. And then whatever the 54 squared, which comes out with 29, 16, I did it before. Add them up then. Add them up in a calculator, one step at a time. Don't try to do everything together as I keep repeating like a parrot. Add these two numbers up in the calculator. Comes out to be 33, 33, 33, 57. And once you have your 33, 57, once you have it 33, 57, then reach for the calculator and look for the square root of it. For some reason, I did not see a square root sign on this thing. I know there is there. It is there, but I don't remember where it is. Oh, it's at the bottom. For a second, I forgot where they put the square root sign in their calculator. Right there at the, at the bottom here, that's where the square root sign is. As I said before, do not mess with this key, these keys, the memory keys, the cancel key, every, all, all of this thing. Don't mess with any, and the parenthesis keys. Do not mess with any of that thing. Keep it simple. Just use the numbers, the 10 digits, 0 through 9, and the four functions. That's all you want to keep it simple. Don't miss, mess with this one. Also, this inserts the negative sign in front of it. There is no reason why you should have to insert the negative sign in front of it. Just know that there is a negative sign in front of it and look for the negative answer. That's all. It's very simple. So that's it. Whatever that comes out to be, that's going to be your answer. I don't know what, what it is. I have no idea. Let's do the next one. The next problem they ask you, ah, here's the, here's the point in K, uh, case in point. Uh, I don't know what the expression is. I'm not, I'm not recalling it properly. Here's, here's, the, here's the prime example of what I mean by do not use the calculator unless it is absolutely necessary. I'm going to spend a few minutes on, on this question just to make you understand. When you're sitting for the GRE, okay, I'm breaking into a sermon right now. For those of you who are interested, obviously. When you're sitting for the GRE, and that's what I tell my clients when they come to me for tutoring, uh, looking for tutoring services, there are some things that you must know. You must know. There is no other choice. One of the basic, most, a lot of the elementary stuff in the math, you must have at your fingertips in order to do well in the exam. 
And one of the things that I tell my client that you, they must know are the squares of the numbers. You must know by heart squares of the numbers 1 through 20. 1 through 20. So let's do that right here. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 9, 16, 25. So far so good. Not too many people have trouble with that. And then 6 would be 36, 49, 80, 64, 81, and 100. You must know these numbers by heart. You shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to reach for the calculator and figure out what 8 squared is. Similarly, let's do 10 more. 11 squared is 121. 144, 144, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. You must know these by heart. You must know your squares by heart. What? What happened? You see a problem here? Where? 11 squared is 121, 12 squared is 144, 13 squared, I do not know what it is, I have no idea what 13 squared is, but I do know that that is not the right answer. 13 squared couldn't possibly be 166, could not possibly be 166, I will bet my life on it without hesitation, I do not know what the hell it is, but it's not 166. Why is that? Because 13... 13 times 13, if you were to do it out, in the unit digit, what you're going to find is, 3 times 3 is 9. In the unit digit, you must find a 9. Therefore, this number has no chance in hell of being a right answer. This is not a 13 square. Had it been, had it been, had it been 189, I would, we would not have known that this is a definitely wrong answer. This could be the right answer, I don't know, until we, until we do it out. This, this, at, at, least it, it, at least it has a 189 being 13 square. At least it's a, it has a chance in hell. 166 does not have a chance in hell. It cannot be 13 square because it must have a unit digit of 9. 14 squared, same exact thing. 14 squared, 14 times 14, 4 times 4 is 16. It must end in a 6. 14 squared cannot end in a, in a 2. It cannot end in a 2. 15 squared is 225. 16 squared, again, 16 squared is 16 squared is 6 times 6 is 36. 16 squared, whatever the hell it is, it must end in a 6. It cannot be 258. 17 squared. 17 squared, 18 squared, and 19 squared, you don't have to memorize them. They do not appear very often in the exam. And if they, if they do happen to appear there, if there is a need where you have to figure out 18 squared or 17 squared or 19 squared, be my guest, reach for the calculator and find it out. Okay? But you don't have to memorize them. But these six, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 121, 144, 169, 196, 225, 256, and 400. Hopefully, I did not made a, make a boo-boo. And if I make a boo-boo, then so be it. You, you, you do it out in a calculator and find out what it is. I don't think I'll have. Anyway, so let's keep listening. So, if you knew your square, if you knew your square, you would have known right away that 15 square, 15 square is 225. If you know 15 square, then take the 15 square and multiply by 15. It does not take that long to do it out. 515s, 515s are how much? Well, I don't know how the hell, how the hell would I know what 515 are, but I do know that 1015 are, 1015s are 150. If 1015s are 150, 515 bloody well be half of 150, which is 75. So 5, 37. 215s are 30, 30 and a 7 is 37, 7 carry 3. Again, 2 times 15 is 30, times 3 is 33. You have your answer there, just stick a negative sign in front of it and that's it. You're done. That's all. There is no need there is no reason why why you should have to use the calculator. Okay? I'm gonna do the same thing again tomorrow. The two examples that they give you on the following page, and you will see that both of the examples, both of these examples, turn the page, take a look at page one number one thirty-two, 
and I will show you in the next clip on day number 26 that both of these questions can be done very easily by hand without using calculator at all. It actually is faster, it's quicker, it's more efficient and it is more accurate. Believe it or not, it is more accurate to use your to do it manually because you know what you're doing there. Calculators, uh, I found that many a times people end up making careless mistakes because they, they, they're not pressing the right things or not in the right order sometimes. Anyway, that was it. I will see you tomorrow on day number 26. As I said, tomorrow on be, we'll do the two questions that are given to, given to us on page 132 and we'll, we'll do them manually by hand and you will see that they are not that bad and they do not take that much time. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.